The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Caleb, and in today's episode, we're gonna muck around with voice recognition. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Some time ago, I found these self-contained voice recognition modules that work with Arduino. I'd been sitting on it for a while trying to figure out what I could do with it until one day Sarah comes into my shop studio office place and said, can you let me know when the dryer is done? The washer and dryer happen to be right outside my shop studio office place, and from where she works, she can't hear it. This is a fairly common request, and then it hit me. When the dryer is done, it plays a little tune. I thought if this voice recognition module can recognize voice, then it could most likely recognize any sound, unless it's way smarter than I thought and actually only recognizes voices, but that's probably not the case. The idea is that the voice recognition module will listen for these little tunes. Once it triggers, it will send a text message to Sarah's phone to let her know that the dryer has completed its cycle. This project's not gonna be terribly complicated on the hardware side since the voice recognition module communicates with an Arduino via serial. So I'll add some status LEDs so we can see what's going on in the unit while it's working. On the software side, the microcontroller will need to communicate with either an SMTP email gateway directly or a daemon on another computer so that it can send the email. The enclosure will be 3D printed with some magnets on one side so that we can stick it to the dryer close to where the sound is coming from. There's not a whole lot to do on the design of this project. It's just got a few requirements. Being compact, easy to disassemble, and have magnets on it somewhere. This is the particle photon, and I don't like to solder these types of things directly onto the board, so I use headers that get soldered on, and then I plug the device into that. I put the voice recognition module on the bottom to keep the whole length as short as possible, and of course have a small four pin header for that as well. The mounting holes on the perf board would be a little bit weird to get to in this configuration, so I went with a different approach. I designed in these slots that the perf board slides into. There are three cutouts on the sides for the magnets, and I'll add those in here. And lastly, caps for the front and back. There's a cutout for the mic on the front and a cutout on the back for the USB power and programming port. As usual, all of the STL files and CAD files will be available on the Element 14 community. Let's print these out and then have a look at all the real parts. I chose the particle photon for the microcontroller on this project because it's already got all the networking stuff figured out. I don't have to code anything at the socket level. These are really quick and easy to get set up. The voice recognition module is made by a company called Elekhouse, and the model is so creatively named Voice Recognition Module V3. It supports up to 80 voice commands with a max of seven working at any given time. It's programmed through the microcontroller that it's connected to and comes with a sketch for doing just that, which makes it pretty easy. I'm going to throw in some LEDs so we have some status about what the device is doing, if it's listening or talking to the server. And here's the 3D printed parts after a little bit of post-processing. Awesome, all the parts are ready, so let's solder it onto a perf board, assemble the whole thing, check out some code, train it, and then we'll test the whole thing out. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. 
Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. Awesome. Let's see. I should have cut out a spot so I can see the status of the particle. I can just barely see a reflection in here of the color of the LED. And there we go. We got green light. It is listening for a command. Where's the microphone? Let's try this. Well, let's see. Does this fit? <laughs> that fits. Let's see. E14. E14. There it is. Awesome. And so now this is not going to reset until I either run the function from the particle cloud uh, web console or have the daemon running, which neither of those are happening right now. So when I run that, it will clear the buffer out and then reset this. Green light will come back on, ready to listen. Awesome. All right, real quick look through the code here. Uh, this is uh, basically an example that I just modified for my uses. There's not a lot going on, but I'll explain it briefly. The biggest modification that I had to make was for the voice recognition V3 library that was included. I had to include the particle soft serial instead of software serial. And in order to do that, I had to modify this library. So I have included it here and it will be in GitHub. So we declare some pins, instantiate the voice recognition module, uh, set up a function here, some miscellaneous assignments. Down here in the setup, we set up serial for debugging and the uh, voice recognition module just sets the baud rate pin modes and here are the cool things so particle dot variable will set up a variable called recognized and the variable recognized and every time that gets changed it will be uploaded to the particle cloud so we can look at it with our python script we can also expose a function that resides here on the particle photon, so it can be triggered by the particle cloud and our Python script. Uh, this is some stuff that was set in the uh, example, so I put it here in order to make this work. And on to the main loop. What we do is we have a listen mode. So if not recognized, we process the recognizer. We listen for it if it is positive, print out some debug stuff, and change a couple of variables here. We change that recognize variable, which triggers the particle cloud, and then we have uh, listening here, which just uh, deals with the next part, which is flip-flopping the LEDs. So if it is listening, then it has the listening LED on and the processing off and the opposite for that if it is not listening. That gives us a little bit of a status and some LEDs, which are nice. And here's the reset recognize function. It just resets both of these to their original values and then clears out the buffer on the voice recognition module. I found that it buffers recognitions because the dryer tone that plays for 10 seconds repeats itself a couple of times. And while this is not in listening mode, the module is still listening and there wasn't a method to turn that off or turn it back on. So all I do is loop through it an arbitrary number of times, which is 20 and uh, read the recognized value and then just do nothing with it, which essentially clears it out and a bunch of debug stuff here. So on to the Python script. We've got a couple of modules, Yagmail for sending an email, PyParticle to connect the particle cloud, uh, the name of the variable to check on particle cloud, and a bunch of configuration that uh, I have obscured here because it's got my Gmail username, password, and phone number in it. So 
you can't see it and either can GitHub. Uh, let's see, first method here, git var. It's just a wrapper for getting the, re the variable from the particle cloud and returning the raw value or result. Send message actually sends the message through Yagmail and Gmail. And then down here in main, this is where the daemonization happens. We instantiate the pi particle library and then in an infinite loop, we get the variable, check to see if it is one. If it is, we print some debug messages, send the message and then call that function that we exposed and send some garbage to it because it requires a uh, variable here. So that's all that does. I've also included the systemd file so it can be installed as a service on a Raspberry Pi, but it should run on anything that you want to run it on. I'm in fact running this on the uh, e-ink display Raspberry Pi. That was a different project I did a while ago. And that's pretty much it. Brief overview of the code. To train this thing, we're going to use the train software example that came with the voice recognition unit. Again, I had to modify parts of it to use the particle soft serial. Uh, this is included in the GitHub repository as well. There's a different folder called something train, AP notify train. So load that up. I just did that. And then we're going to minimize that and use the serial monitor from uh, the Arduino IDE because it's better than the particle one. Uh, we'll check and see if it works by typing help. We have access to some commands. There it is. The command we want to use is sig train and then we give it the bank number that we want to train and it will prompt us to uh, speak now, speak again, speak again, and then it will work or not. To do that, I have a sample of the little tune that the dryer plays. And yeah, um, Pro Tools is probably overkill, but it's what I use. So I'll play a little sample of this so you can hear what it's gonna be like. Oh, I guess I need to focus. So the trick here is hitting enter on the command, getting focus over here, playing it, stopping it, playing it, stopping it as I get the prompts. So let's give it a try. See how many times we have to do this to make it work. Sig train zero. I'm going to hit enter. Wow, seriously, first try, awesome. Okay, that's it, that's trained. We can now flash the listener software onto it, which is what we already reviewed, and give this thing a test. Right on. Well, this is a segment that would normally be a demo of the unit, but there were a few problems. It turns out that this is really difficult to test, with each iteration being a 10 minute cycle on the dryer, since that's its minimum. I ran the cycle several times and it wouldn't trigger at all. To test that it was still working, I played the tune back from my computer in the same way that I trained it. Sure enough, it triggered. To test further, I played the same file back from my phone and a different set of speakers, neither of those would trigger it. It seems that the module can differentiate tonal quality of what it was trained for. So I set a mic on the dryer and recorded a cycle. I brought the file in, edited out the leading stuff, and realized that the dryer starts playing the tune as it's spinning down, meaning that there's a ton of background noise while the little tune plays. In the beginning, I thought that would be okay. If I trained it with a clean tune without any background noise, that the module would be able to recognize through that noise. I did some more testing where I played the clean tune through various background noises to see if it would trigger, and only at very low volumes of background noise would the module recognize the tune. Much lower than the volume of the actual dryer, and of course there's no way to control that. I did train it with a recorded tune, and it still wouldn't recognize. 
I think I'm gonna have to call a partial failure on this one. The technology works, and in that sense, the project was a success. But the scenario that I'm trying to get this to work in is just not working out. Maybe there are better voice recognition modules that have different algorithms that can recognize through background noise better than this one can. I did learn some things, I gained some experience with new tech and through the build, so overall it's a win for me. But I'm not going to give up just yet. Since it's already built, I'm going to let it run over the next couple of weeks and on real dryer cycles. Maybe if I place it just right, it'll work. Not super hopeful, but I'm going to try anyways. And that's it for today. Listening for the dryer was just one scenario to use this type of technology. Do you have any ideas of how this could be used? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com slash presents. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep making.